from Hollywood, the National Broadcasting Company presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, production, Chris Cross, director... This is Robert Seward-Mack. Star... This is Burt Lancaster. Hollywood screen directors bring you an experiment in crime. As for the first time on the air, we present the motion picture drama, Criss Cross, starring Burt Lancaster in his original role of Steve Thompson. This was it. There was no turning back now. I tensed behind the wheel of the armored truck. Pop Crane was riding him back with the Bliss Company payroll. $250,000. A quarter of a million dollars in cash. This was the break that would fix it for Anna and me. Unless someone knew about our plans. Steve! Pop Crane stuck his head through the opening behind the driver's seat. I don't like it, Steve. What's the matter, Pop? There should be three of us on a trip like this. Take it easy, Pop. We've always had three men on a run like this before. But I told you, Bailey couldn't make it. Uh, I guess you're right. I guess I'm just getting too old to be a guard on an armored truck. Settle down, Pop. You got a long ride ahead of you. It's a 40-minute run to San Rafaelo. Nothing could possibly go wrong now. Unless Pop was getting wise. No. Nothing to do but sit here and keep an eye on the road. And think about Anna. After it's done, it'll just be you and me, Steve. The way it should have been from the start. I'll make you forget all those things that happened to us before. All those things that happened to us before. Two years ago, I'd been going steady with Anna. Me, Steve Thompson. She wanted what I couldn't give her. Money, glamour, excitement. We broke up. I left town. When I came back, I got this job with the armored trucks. She was in my bones. Somehow, before I knew it, there I was. Back in the old place again. The Roundup. Our old hangout. And there she was. Dancing with some guy out on the floor. Better forget about Anna, Steve. She's bad medicine. Well, my old pal, Pete Ramirez, minding my business again as usual, hmm? Plenty of other girls besides Anna, Steve. That official lieutenant? Well, now that you're a detective lieutenant, do you just enjoy putting your nose in other people's lives? Nick, Steve, not lieutenant. Pete, I'm your friend, believe me. She's no good for you. Forget her. Steve! Here she comes. Why don't you tell it to her? Steve! Oh, Steve, how are you? Hello, Anna. Anna, Pete's got something he wanted to say to you. Haven't you, Pete? Well, it looks like you'd rather find it out for yourself. I'll see you later, Steve. Get him. Oh, Steve, when'd you get back? A couple of days ago. I don't know, a week. A week and you never called me up. Come on, sit down. You're looking good, Anna. Steve, why, why didn't you answer my letters? Well, I, I guess I just never had anything to say. Your family, your detective friend, Pete, they wouldn't tell me anything about you. They figured we were all washed up. Did you come in here to see me, Steve? Is that why you're here? <laughs> I suppose I figured I'd see you. <laughs> Boy, we sure used to go round and round. What do we ever have to fight about anyway? Steve, it was crazy. We were in love, weren't we? Well, no use having a fight with anyone unless you really like him. Wouldn't be much fun, would it? But then we'd make up, Steve. That was the best part, wasn't it? When we'd make up. Yeah. We'd make up. Excuse me. I hate to break this up, but you're sitting in my seat. Slim. Anna. You. You with him? Steve, this is Slim Dundee. Yeah, I've heard of him. Slim Dundee, a gangster. I like Gambler better. Uh, Slim, this is Steve Thompson. Yeah, I know. Anna, you, uh, you running around with him? What do you mean, running around, Steve? Anna and me are married. Married? That's what Pete was getting at. I was going to tell you, Steve. Yeah, Steve, we're kind of celebrating tonight. Like to join us? No, no, no thanks. 
Anna and I just ran into each other, see? Sure. We just stopped to say hello, that's all. I know how it is. Oh, so long, Anna. Steve, wait. What? Oh, I'd like to explain. Sure, sure. We'll probably run into each other again. Sometime. Why shouldn't we? Mrs. Dundee... Thirty minutes more to San Rafaelo. Thirty minutes and then it would be all over. But it should have been all over then. It was finished. Anna and I were through. She had a right to get married, even to a guy like Slim. Only it wasn't finished. Everywhere I went, I'd see her face. Every girl I passed was her. But then one afternoon, a few months later, I really saw her. In Union Station. She was with Slim, hurrying towards the train gate. Then she was lost in the crowd. I was glad she hadn't seen me, glad she was leaving town. Then, there she was again, coming back out of the passenger tunnel, alone. The South Bay Super Chief is now loading at gate four for Chicago. Hello, Steve. Hello. But I just saw you leaving. You got on the train with Slim. I just saw him off. You mind? No. No, I don't mind. Why should I? It's none of my business. Wait, Steve, I've I got to talk to you. Well, go ahead. No, I can't talk to you here. Why not? Vincent will see us together. Vincent? One of Slim's men, he's driving me home. Oh. What's the matter? Afraid he'd get the wrong idea? That's right, he would. Slim left Vincent around to keep an eye on you while he was out of town, is that it? If you want to put it that way. Don't turn there, he is. Don't let him see you. He won't see me. You don't have to worry. Steve, please, i got to talk to you. Come to my apartment later, please, do you? Aren't you afraid of what might happen? Please. Super Chief, now departing on track four. <laughs> Quite a place you got here. Shannon and all. Slim's been pretty good to you. Yeah. Then what do you want to see me for? Gives you everything? Sure. Diamonds. So that's what you saw in him. It's better than working for the department store. I didn't think he was the marrying kind. Oh, he did. He married me, all right. Why did you do it? You tell me why, Diamonds. Why did you do it? You. Me? You and your family and your lovely copper friend, Pete. Pete? Well, what did he do? As if you didn't know. He said I was poison to you. He told me if I didn't stay away from you, he'd frame me and send me to jail. Well, why did you come to me? Because I was afraid. Besides, what chance did we have with the kind of money you were making? Because you left and I wrote you and you didn't answer. Because every day you were away, Slim was after me, wanting to give me everything. And I got tired of being a fool. I got fed up and I didn't care. Anna. Oh, Steve. Steve, what happened? How did it happen? How did I get all mixed up? I didn't know, Anna. I, I, I'm scared. Slim and Vincent, the killers, they cut throats. Gee, you, Steve, what are we going to do? I don't know, Anna. But you're not going to go back to Slim. <laughs> Twenty minutes more, and I'd have money enough to take a far away from Slim Dundee. But then it was different. While Slim was out of town, we couldn't stay away from each other. We took crazy chances in being seen together. And that morning, Anna came to my room. Steve. Steve, you gotta hide. Do something quick today. What happened? Slim is on his way back. He's looking for you. Well, how do you know? He found out about us. He must have. Steve, we were crazy. When's he coming back? I don't know any minute. You gotta hurry. No. No, Anna. I'm not leaving you. You've got to. He'll kill you. You don't know him the way I do. You don't know the people he's got around him. He'll kill you the minute he sees you, Steve. We'll work it out. We'll go away together. Where? Where can we go? We got no money. Don't you understand? We haven't got a cent. He'll always find us. Forget about Slim. Pull yourself together for a minute. Now listen to me. If it's money you want, I'll get it. I know a way. But how? How? Never mind. Go up to the house at Palace Verdes. Your beach house at Palace Verdes? What for? Stay there. Wait for me. I'll clear it up. You, you can't, Steve. Yes. Yes, I know a way. I've got to. Steve. Slim. Hello, baby. Slim, listen. Please, Slim. You know, Steve, it don't look right. Anna being here in your room. Can't exactly say it looks right now, can you? What do you think, Vincent? No, Bush. It looks kind of like... I asked her to come here, Slim. 
I, uh, I, I wanted to reach you. I, I wanted to talk to you. Oh, so it was me all the time, huh? So it's not the way it looks. No. No, it's not the way it looks. That's right, Slim. It's just like he said he wanted to talk to you, and you were out of town, so I said I'd come over. You see, Vincent? He really wanted to see me. Yes, Slim. Maybe he thinks you're pretty. Shut up. Tell me now, Stevie, what kind of business could you and I possibly have together? A job. A job? Well, why come to me? Because you're the only crooks I know. Oh, now is that polite, Steve? Is it hospitable? Should I let him have it, Slim? Hold it. Tell me, Stevie, what kind of a job is this you need crooks? Where I work. Where you work? Armored trucks. I drive a payroll truck. What are you talking about? You can't hijack an armored truck. It can't be done. You know it can't be done. It can be done. How? If you have an inside man. Come up to my place tomorrow, Steve. We'll discuss it. You know where my apartment is, don't you, Stevie? You are listening to the Screen Directors Playhouse production of Criss Cross. Starring Burt Lancaster, with Betty Lou Gerson as Anna. I hunched over the wheel of the armored truck. Pop Crane was in back with the payroll. A quarter of a million dollars in cash. But nothing would happen to Pop, they promised. Only 15 minutes more. It was all a matter of timing. Call it luck, fate, whatever you want. But if I hadn't come back to L.A., if I hadn't run into her again that night at the Roundup, if I hadn't been at the Union Station that afternoon, Anna and I might never have gotten together again. But we did. Now we were trapped. I went to Slim's apartment to work out the deal. Steve, this is Finchley. Who's Finchley? He's our layout man. It's all a matter of time, and on a job like this, Finchley can lay out a timetable that would have worked on the Normandy invasion. I still think it's a lunatic idea. There hasn't been a successful heist of an armored truck in more than 28 years. What do you have in mind, Steve? The Bliss Auto Payroll. That's Henry Fellow? Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Delightful, delightful. How, how long's the run? 40 minutes. Let's well, see. You're on the coast highway at San Rafaelo. Only one highway available until you pass the bridge. Oh, this will take some doing. I suggest you go out for some sandwiches. Anna's and... make some coffee out in the kitchen. I'll pick up some stuff to go with it. You might as well relax, Steve. Yes, yeah, Steve, this will take quite a bit of doing so far as the... Coffee ready, Anna? Steve. We've only got a second, Anna. They've gone out to pick up some sandwiches. Oh, Steve, Steve. Listen, Anna. Do you understand? You ought to go to the house at Palace Verde. I, I want to cry. I want to cry, Steve, when I think what's happening. You wait at the house for I me. I wish we'd never met. It's done, settled. It's the only I way. wish you'd never seen me. You'll stay there. You'll wait for me. It'll take some time to get away. The police will hold me, ask me questions. But stay there. And don't worry. Shh. The back. Quick. Give me the coffee. Yeah. Let me take it in. You go out the back door. Yes, I'm sure it'll work that way. Uh... Well, just in time. Coffee's all ready. Where's Anna? Well, didn't you see her? She just went down for a paper. No, I didn't see her. Ah, uh, gentlemen, the plan's fairly complete now. No shooting, of course. We'll use a chemical explosive, man. I told you we got the best. In a getaway car? Vincent drives the fastest heap there is. No, no, no. I'd use the slowest vehicle to take the money out. Something nobody would suspect, say, uh, an ice cream wagon. Smart, huh? <laughs> and you'll need a cover story. What do you mean, cover story? For the getaway... You'll need, uh, well, an oil truck, too. One of those big ones. What for? To break down at the proper time, block the bridge. Uh, jam the truck sideways across the road, huh? Yeah, cut off pursuit. Slim, after the robbery, you'll be driving up the coast. If they stop you, what's your story? Mm. Taking a trip to Detroit, up the coast by way of San Francisco. Good, good, but really go there. Advertise it. Let the cops downtown put it on the teletype. Well, we'll pass the word around. We'll give a farewell party the night before. 
Well, there you have it. All clear? How about it, Steve? Anything else you'd like to know? Yeah. Who handles the payoff? Who do you want? Finchley, Vincent, Walt, pick anyone. How about Anna? Okay, let it be, Anna. Is that all right for you? I can handle Anna. Okay, Vincent, when you get that ice cream wagon back to town, give the money to Anna. It's a deal. It's all set. The way I see it, then there'll be no shooting. No shooting whatsoever, just like Finchley said. No matter what, nothing's going to happen to the old man working with me. Is that understood? You're the boss, Stevie. You get the truck there, we'll take care of the rest. The plan was working for Anna and me. Slim threw his farewell party the night before. He even picked a fight with me. The cops couldn't possibly think we were in it together. And now, this was it. The payoff. For 35 minutes, I'd been rolling that armored truck up the coast highway. Nothing could stop it now. Five more minutes and we'd be across the bridge. Another five minutes to San Rafael, to Vincent and the ice cream wagon, to the rest of them. Another five minutes to go. But then... Steve, there's a car tailing us. I looked into my rearview mirror. Huh? Oh, it's, it's just your imagination, Pop. No, that big black sedan, he swung out as we passed. Lots of black cars on the road. Open her up, let's see if they stay with us. Oh, all right. Faster, Steve, they're gaining on us. It's all she'll do. They were coming like the flying red horse. They're gonna pass us. Well, they passed us. Guess they were just in a hurry. Yeah, I must be getting jittery. Take it easy, Pop. Only another four minutes. Another four minutes. Right on schedule. That would be Slim and Walt in that black sedan. And there's the oil truck right ahead. On the nose. Perfect timing. And right outside the gates of the Bliss Auto Plant, an ice cream wagon. Vincent. Hey, ice cream! I turned into the main gate and I pulled up in front of the cashier's office. And there were Slim and Walt, walking towards us as we climbed out of the truck. And then it happened. An explosion. A yellow cloud of smoke rolling over everything, burning our eyes, choking us. Go back, Steve! In the truck! It's a holdup! Slim and Walt wearing gas masks now, coming through the smoke and the fumes, popped down on one knee. Slim letting him have it! Then ah! Slim, turning his gun towards me, and I knew it was a devil's cross! It's all right, nurse. Police department. Doctor said I could see him. I'm Lieutenant Pete Ramirez. Oh, certainly, Lieutenant. Oh, that poor boy. But he's quite a hero. Did you see the evening paper? Yes, yes. Look, it says Steve Thompson fights off bandits single-handed. Bandits escape with yes, half yes, the payroll. Yes, yes, I know. Payroll. Excuse me, please. I'd like to talk to him alone. Oh. Hello, Lieutenant. Paying a friendly call? Not so friendly, Steve. Pop Crane is dead. Yeah, I know. I tried to save him. No, you didn't, Steve. You were in with him. You were part of it. You got it all figured out, They huh? used you, Steve. They took you. Slim and Anna. Oh? You worked for the armored trucks. They needed an inside man. You were it. Keep talking. You still haven't said anything. What did she do, Steve? Make your promises? Were you going to run away together? Tell the truth, Steve. Didn't she work you for the prize sucker of all time? Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. I'll tell you something that may interest you. Slim isn't dead. You didn't kill him. He got away. What are you driving at? Just this, chump. If she double-crossed you, if she's with Slim now, then you're all right. But if she's really waiting for you somewhere, then he'll get you. Get out. He'll send a gunman for you right here in the hospital. And I said get, get out. You. Got nothing on me? I gotta sleep. Sorry, Steve. But you'll never sleep again. He's waiting for me. Steve. Huh? Wake up, Steve. I gotta sleep. Wake up. Vincent. What are you doing here? Quiet. You 
When I wake up, the whole hospital. What do you want? I come to get you, Steve. I can't get out of bed. Can't you see I'm all strapped up? I can't move. I got a wheelchair. You're coming with me. Let me go of me. Slim wants to see you. Wants to find out where the money is, where Anna is. Come on. Let me go. You can't take me out of here. Oh. Now, come on. Let me get you in that wheelchair. I'll give it to you with the other end of this gun. There. Look, Vincent, don't take me to Slim. Keep your voice, too. We're going into the hall. What's he paying you? Two grand? Five? Ten? Take me where I want to go and I'll give you 50,000. 50 grand, Bitson. Are you listening? Through this door. I've got a car outside. Come on, Bitson. What are you afraid of? What difference does it make who pays you? Slim's a dead man. The cops are after him. Put your arm on my shoulder while I hoist you into the car. Fifty grand, Benson. It's a lot of dough, but I got it. You know I got it. Come on, be smart. Take me where I want to go. Palace Verdes, down at the beach. Fifty grand, Vincent. Fifty grand. I know I knew you'd be here. Where'd Vincent come from? Give him 50,000. The Slim? For me. Pay him, Anna. Or give it to him. Five bundles. But so much. Hand it over. You pay him and get rid of him. Oh, here's your money. Thanks. And don't try nothing funny after I close this door. Steve, I don't get it. Why did Vincent bring you? How'd you get out of the hospital? Slim sent him. Slim? To get me. Oh. But I offered him more money. He's got it now. He's satisfied. We're all through with him. You think we're through? Don't you see? Don't you know what's going to happen? He's on his way back to Slim. You tell Slim where I am right this minute. No, the cops are after I him. I gotta get away. I gotta hurry. You mean, you mean, you mean leave me here? How far can I get with you? You can't move. You wouldn't last a day. Why did you have to come here in the first place? Why? It was all working out fine. The papers said you'd be in the hospital for weeks. I see. You came here because you didn't expect me to be here. Pete was right. It was you and Slim. All those things you said. You you said you love me. Love. Love, you gotta watch out for yourself. What do you want me to do? Give myself up, throw all this money away? I never wanted the money. I just wanted you. After we split up, I used to walk around the streets at night. I used to think about you. I wanted to hold you. To take care of you. What a pity it didn't work out. What a pity. Run, Anna. Run. I... I'm sorry. I, I can't help it. I'm sorry. Oh. Sorry about what, Anna? Sam, oh, no. Oh. Hello, Steve. I figured you'd bribe Vincent to take you to Anna. You always wanted her, didn't you, Steve? Well, now you've got her. Steve, don't let him. Don't let him kill me, Steve. Take care of me. Help me, Steve. Steve. What a pity, Anna. I can't move. No, Slim, no! I won't do you any good, Slim. You can't get away. You can't... Drop it, Dundee. Drop that gun. I'm sorry, Steve. I knew she was poison for you. You tried, Pete. But some guys have to learn it. The hard way. Thank 
broadcaster will return in just a moment. In the following weeks, you will hear such stars as Joseph Cotton, Barbara Stanwyck, and Cary Grant. Next week, you'll find another adventure in radio drama on Screen Director's Playhouse. The motion picture story, Pitfall, with its original team of director and stars. Andre de Toth and Dick Powell and Jane Wyatt. Now, here again is tonight's star, Burt Lancaster. Thank you. In Criss Cross, I was fortunate enough to work under a man I considered to be one of the world's finest directors. His name is Robert Siodmak. And he happens to be a very well-traveled fellow. Robert directed pictures in Germany and France before coming to Hollywood, where he said happily that his travels were finally over. Then he directed me in two pictures. Well, all I can say is that Robert Siodmak is now directing pictures in Italy. He's in Naples, shooting a film called Deported. But we've flown his recorded voice to Hollywood for the program tonight. My director, Robert Siodmak. Thank you, Bert. I'm so sorry I'm not with you in Hollywood tonight. You see, I'm worried. In crisscross, you were supposed to play the part of a rather tough young man. And really, you're such a nice fellow. Were you tough enough, Bert? If I were with you in the studio, I would nag at you and make faces, and then you would be aggravated and you'd act very tough. And everybody would say, <laughs> you see, Siodmak is a good director, when really I'm just a good aggravator. So don't worry, Bert. Soon... I will be back in Hollywood, and I will drive you wild. Good night. And good night to you, Robert Siodmak and Burt Lancaster. Criss Cross was presented through the courtesy of Universal International Studios, now releasing Sword in the Desert, starring Dana Andrews, Marta Torin, and Stephen McNally. Burt Lancaster is the star of The Hawk and the Arrow, a Norma F.R. production, soon to be released by Warner Brothers. George Marshall, who appeared on last week's program, directed the current Hal Wallace release for Paramount, My Friend Irma. Starring John Lund and Diana Lynn with NBC's sensational new comedy team, Martin and Lewis. <laughs> Included in tonight's cast were Betty Lou Gerson, Stan Waxman, Jeff Corey, Ed Max, Betty Moran, Dan Riss. Norman Field, and Ken Christie. Criss Cross was adapted for radio by Warren Lewis, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley, with dramatic direction by Bill Karn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking. Listen again next week when we present... Screen Director's Playhouse, Production, Pitfall, Director, Andre de Toth, Stars, Dick Powell, Jane Wyatt. Tomorrow night, one of Hollywood's top stars, Cornell Wilde, takes the leading role in another exciting drama on Cavalcade of America. Tune in NBC's Tuesday lineup of top entertainment. You'll hear Cornell Wilde in This Little Plot of Ground the story of a tragic marriage, and one of America's most famous writers. Listen tomorrow night for Cavalcade of America, starring Cornell Wilde on NBC. You're tuned for the stars on NBC.